Do you want to create a cool matrix raining code effect like you see here on the screen? If you do, then stick around. Hello and welcome to another shader graph tutorial in Unity 2019. We'll be covering how to create a matrix rain code shader. Here is a preview of the nodes for those who don't want to watch the in-depth tutorial. This project will be using the universal render pipeline and the type of shader graph I'll be utilizing is the PBR graph. If you are unsure of how to set up your project to use URP, refer to my lava shader graph video up in the annotations or down in the description. That takes you step by step on how to set up a project and how to decide between which shader graphs to use. With the intro out of the way, let's open up our graph and dive into the fun part. I want to start off by creating a UV scrolling effect. I am going to go through this step fairly quickly since I explained it more in depth in my lava shader video. The main idea is that we want some persistently increasing value and use that to offset our UVs to get a scrolling effect. We use the time node and we multiply the output time by a vector2 property. This is so we can easily adjust the scroll speed effect via the inspector. For our effect, make sure to keep the x value 0 while only changing the speed with the y value. This is to keep a vertical scrolling effect. We feed the output of our multiply into the offset input of a tiling and offset node. I will create another vector2 property which I will use to control the tiling amount. This is the basis of our scrolling effect, which I'll group all the nodes and I'll label it scroll effect. This is where we need to leave Unity for a few minutes. We need to create a few textures to use for our shader. The easiest texture to start with is creating the letters portion of our effect. To start, I downloaded a commercial free font that was close to the matrix font. I believe it is a few symbols from different uh, Chinese dialects for the original font used in the movies. There is a link in the description to the font that I used. Open up your favorite image editing software, I'll be using GIMP. I use a larger square canvas to start off with, so I can use a larger font size to prevent weird artifacting. Create a few text columns and then duplicate them across the canvas. This gives variety with little effort. Make sure the text color is black and this is on a transparent background. This will be important for our color and alpha manipulation later in the shader. It is best to fill the entire canvas with equal spacing between the columns of text. Once you complete this, export it as a PNG and use the default settings. The next texture is where you get to be a little creative. Since I'm trying to replicate the uh, movie's effect, I'll need a way to get the first few characters to display white before turning to a green color, then fading out to a completely transparent effect. When dealing with shaders, it is good to know that white is all the primary colors, red, green, and blue, at full intensity. If we were to look at the RGB values of white, we would notice that it would be 1111. That means black would be the opposite of that, so the value would be 0000. zero, zero, zero. Since the color theory is crucial for the shader to work properly, let's go into a few examples of how the colors can be blended or manipulated in Unity's shader graph. Shader graph defaults the color values to the RGBA of 0 to 1, which these values are clamped. This means if you try to set a value lower than 0, it will automatically switch to 0, and if you try to set a value higher than 1, it will remain 1. So what do these numbers in RGBA stand for? Well, RGBA stands for red, green, blue, and alpha. The type of color theory used in shader graph is called additive colors. This is the same principle LED TVs utilize. This means that there are four values for every color, a certain amount of red, green, blue, and alpha. Each value is considered a channel, so there would be a red channel, green channel, etc. I will be eventually adding, subtracting, and multiplying colors together for the shader, so it will be important to know how this math is working. Since we know each color is composed of four values, when we have to do any math function, all four values will be used. An example of adding colors would be adding black and green together. We know black is 0000, and green would be 0100. If we add these together, each channel would be added together independently. So our result would end up being 0100, which may seem funny, but since black is complete lack of color, adding any color to it will result in the color that we added, which in this case was green. For fun, I would recommend trying to add any color to pure white to see what the result is. Now that we have a general idea of how the channel values get used by our math nodes, 
We can use this information to our advantage when creating our last texture. This last texture will allow us to start off with white lettering, then transition into green that we want, then lastly fade to a complete transparency. The way that I will be achieving this is using a grayscale image. Create a custom gradient that starts off fully transparent white and transitions into solid white. This chunk needs to be fairly small. Have this transition to solid black, then lastly fade out to complete transparent black. You can get creative with this gradient, but this is a solid basis to work with. It is time for you to add your own unique spin to this project. You can see how I create a separate layer over my text texture that is fully transparent. I then start drawing in my gradient on this layer. This is to help me visualize how the effect will look on the final object and also allow me to easily keep my textures aligned. You will notice that I do random lengths of the gradient, but only over one vertical line of text at a time. This is because when we scroll this texture over our text, we want this text to be affecting the transparency of our shader along with the manipulation of colors. You can use whatever grayscale gradient you want along with the placing uh, wherever you deem fit. I do recommend painting in some gradient that wraps between the top and the bottom of the texture to help avoid weird gaps. Once you get a texture you are happy with, export it in the same fashion as before. Bring these textures into your Unity project, select your textures in the inspector, and change the wrap mode to repeat. This helps with the scrolling effect we'll see in the shader graph. Head back into the shader graph now. I recommend creating two texture 2D properties in the blackboard, which one will be the matrix text texture and the other will be the gradient grayscale texture. Drag these into the shader graph, connect these properties into their own sample texture 2D node. We want to scroll the gradient texture, which since we already created the scrolling logic, all we need to do is plug the output of the tiling and offset node into the sample texture 2D input of our gradient texture. We should notice in the preview window, the gradient scrolling vertically and looping. I want to combine this scrolling effect with the text. I will do this by multiplying the alpha of my gradient texture with the alpha of the text texture. The reason this works is the same theory discussed earlier with the adding. Instead of just adding the channels, you multiply the individual channels together. To get a little better idea what is happening, let's look at our two alpha outputs overlaid with each other. The way to think about how a shader works is the math we are doing with the nodes is being applied to every pixel being shown. So if the pixels overlap each other, the math will be applied using the data from those two pixels. In this case, you can see GIMP shows pixels with an alpha value of zero as completely transparent. And for full alpha, it shows black. Unity does this a little differently with transparent pixels being black and visible pixels being white based off the alpha values alone. Since the math still works the same between the two, let's review how this works with the GIMP files. If we take a look here, you'll see a black pixel overlaps a completely transparent pixel. So if we multiply zero value by a one value, we get zero since anything multiplied by zero is always zero. With this bit of knowledge under our belt, we now know why our text is combining with the gradient texture and given the cool effect we want. At this point, you could technically just multiply the result by a color and have a decent enough looking effect. But if you're like me, you'll want to see a little spicier shader. So the next goal is to use our gradient texture to get the color profile that we are looking for when it transitions from white to green then fades out. And to stay consistent with keeping our graph clean, let's group the text texture and multiply node and call it text texture. You may be tempted to try to just multiply a color either by the alpha of the gradient texture or maybe even the RGBA output. However, if you do this, you will not get the desired result. The method I will use to achieve the desired effect will be coloring our gradients alpha, then adding back in just the RGB values of the gradient. The first step of this is fairly simple. We will color our alpha by multiplying our gradient's alpha channel by a color. I recommend creating a color property in the blackboard, which I'll just call color of effect. Now we need to get just our RGB values of the gradient texture. There are a couple of ways of doing this, such as using a combine node and hooking up the RGB channels respectively, or an even easier method would be multiplying the RGBA output by the alpha channel. 
The last portion of this step is to add the result of these two multiply nodes. And I'll group these nodes and call it coloring gradient and alpha control. We now need to combine the gradient and the text texture together. So how do we do that? We're gonna use the multiply node and take the output of our add and also the output of our multiply and we should be good. I personally think the shader looks awesome on its own, which if you plug in what we currently have into the master node, then apply the shader to a 3D model, you'll notice the effect. But what about using the shader as essentially a mask? Having the raining code go over a real world object that isn't see-through would be pretty awesome. So let's add this to our graph. I think it would be nice to have the option to easily go back and forth of a see-through object or using the object's texture. To do this, we'll be getting into branching logic. This may sound scary, but it is very similar to an if statement. If some condition is met, then the shader will use input A, and if it isn't met, then it'll use input B. We need to create a new texture 2D property. This time we need to do something special. For the reference field, you'll need to fill it out as underscore capital M, A, I, N, capital T, E, X, and hit enter. This reference change makes it so the shader will automatically pull the texture that is already applied to the model. While we are on the blackboard, we need to create a Boolean property, which I'll just use the title Use Texture. Drag both of these properties into the graph. We need to sample our main text property with a sample texture 2D node. Now if we add the RGBA value of this texture to the output of our multiply, we now have the result we want. I'll group these nodes and I'll call it main texture plus rain effect. This is where things get a little tricky with the branch node. You'll need a predicate, which is our boolean property, and you need a true input and a false input. Let's start off by branching the alpha. We need to input the alpha of our main text into the true input of a branch node. Next is taking the output of the alphas we multiply together and plug it into the false input of our branch node. Lastly, plug the boolean property into the predicate input. Now the alpha branching is complete. I'll group this branch as alpha logic. It is time to do the color portion of the branching logic. Create a new branch node and connect the output of our add node into the true input. Next, we need the output of the multiply result from earlier that gave us the color gradient text to be plugged into the false input. And again, plug the boolean into the predicate. I'll group this branch as color and emission logic. With this, we are nearly done. Now we need to plug our outputs into a PBR master node. Plug the output of the color and emission branch logic and plug it into the albedo and emission inputs of the master node. Then plug the output of the alpha branch logic into the alpha input of the master node. You may notice in the preview that there is still a solid black background with no transparencies. What we need to do is click on the little gear symbol on our master node to get it to the settings. Change the surface option from opaque to transparent. Finally, save the asset. Now bring in any 3D model you want. You'll need to change the materials options to use the shader graph we just created. Now all you have to do is tweak your options to get the final look you want. Use the boolean to switch between using the texture tied to the material or having only a raining text for the surface. You are now armed with the knowledge to make this texture your own and make it pop. As an example, here's my own personal flair of adding some gradient noise with HDR color to make the text stand out occasionally and multiple layers of scrolling to give more life and variety. I really do hope that you enjoyed and learned from this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and also liking the video. That helps me grow this channel to make it easier for others to access the information. But with that being said, I hope you take care and be safe.